We're going to talk briefly about some of the conceptual implications of Gauss's law, in particular what it tells us about the behavior of a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium. And, and Gauss is going to tell us some surprising things about a number of ways that a conductor behaves. It's going to tell us about the field strength inside of the conductor, about the location of the charge, uh, about the behavior of the conductor in an external field, and uh, finally, about shielding. So let's, let's think about a conductor. Suppose we have a neutral conductor in an external field. Um, this is neutral, meaning it's full of charges, but there's the, the, the same number of positives and negatives. And if, if we take this neutral conductor and we put it in an external field, uh, or we impose an, electro, an external electric field on it, uh, we know that if there's field, that the charges inside will experience force. And that because we have a conductor, that those charges are free to move. Now, it's the negatives that are free to move. So if you're a negative and you're near one of, you're in this field, you experience the field as it's communicated to you via these field lines, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to move. Remember, these are negative charges, so which way are they going to go? Stop and think about it. They're going to go upstream, right? So that the negatives are going to go against the field lines. And notice what happens when they do that. Those negatives create a little area where there are excess negatives piled up because the field lines have, have forced them to do that. And also, on the other side, there's a little place that's slightly more positive than the rest of the conductor. Well, n we have a net neutral conductor still, but there are parts of this conductor that are... Uh, no longer looking neutral. So the, the conductor is becoming polarized. We're separating the charges. And when we have these separated charges, those new charges will also themselves create field. So if we, if we want to draw the lines for that, we would have field going from the positive to the negative. Notice that that field opposes the field imposed from the outside. External field causes charges to migrate. The migrated charges create field in opposition to the external field. And what happens? Well, the two fields cancel each other out. In fact, it doesn't cancel each other out immediately. Well, all of this occurs very rapidly. But if there is still net field inside, then the charges move. And they will continue to move until there is no net field inside. When is there no net field inside? If there's no net field, when the charges have moved enough so that they create electric field in opposition to the externally generated electric field so that all of the moved charges cancel out the external field. The very idea of electrostatic equilibrium means that the charges are going to move and they're going to cancel out the interior field. So what that tells us is that we end up with a conductor that has two important characteristics. One is that the field is excluded from the conductor. The field only exists outside of the conductor. Uh, and inside of the conductor, there's no field. And the other thing is that the the object is polarized and that the, the charges now inhabit the surface, the very edges of the object. Now, do they, are they right up against the edge or just sort of roughly in that edge neighborhood? Well, let's think about what Gauss's law tells us. Suppose we place a Gaussian surface, an enclosed Gaussian surface, inside of our uh, charged conductor. What did we say is the field inside? Well, the field inside is zero. So if the field inside is zero, what's the flux? The flux has to be zero. The flux must be zero. Because if there were field, then the charges would still be moving. But we know the charges aren't moving anymore. So there must not be field. And if there's no field, there can't possibly be flux. Because the field times the area is the flux. So there's no flux. Well, if there's no flux, what does Gauss say about the charge inside of that Gaussian surface? Gauss's law says that if there's no flux, there must also be no net charge inside. That means when we're inside of the conductor, everywhere inside of the conductor, there must be 
also no net charge. The only way we can have charge inside of the conductor is if we have flux inside the conductor, and we can't have flux without field. So how could we have, so where, where is the charge? Well, the only way we can get, get flux is if we move the Gaussian so that part of the Gaussian goes outside of the body. And if the Gaussian goes outside of the body, then we get field crossing the Gaussian surface. Once we have field crossing the Gaussian surface, we have flux. And once we have flux, we can have charge enclosed. So what that tells us is the only way to enclose charge is to have the Gaussian surface actually leave the conductor. That tells us that all of the charge resides right at the very surface of the charged conductor. So crucial things to remember. It's good to be able to walk through this line of reasoning, but it's, it's, it's also important just to remember two crucial things. Inside of a conductor at electrostatic equilibrium, and by the way, electrostatic equilibrium is established in very short period of time. It happens extremely rapidly. I, I, you know, on the order of, I don't know, nanoseconds? So, you know, in the, you know, however long it takes for the charges to move, it's, it, they, they move very quickly. Um, anyway, inside of a conductor, no matter what, there is always no charge internally. The charge is all, all, always zero. Any charge is at the surface. And the field strength inside of a conductor is also always zero. Words to live by.